so this next lady, she has an incredible legacy of battling for the environment. She was the head of the EPA under President Obama, and now she's the head of environment, policy, and social initiatives at a little company called Apple. I met her last night. She's a joy and a force of nature, Lisa Jackson. Well, Lisa, it's wonderful to have you. I'm so excited to be here. So a little I, nervous. This room, wow, so many. It's a great, people. a historic place. Yeah, really. And it's writing school. That's where the action is. But anyway, talking about action, I know that Lisa has been here for two days now, or three days. How many days have you been in Austria? Two days. Yeah. Two days. And uh, I've sent her around in Austria to do some wine tasting. So you have to admit that the Austrian wine is the best wine. It's really, really good. <laughs> you heard it, you see? Let's give her a hand for that. It's just good taste when it comes to wine. <laughs> you see, my responsibility is not just to come here for the environmental conference, but also to pump up the economy. So that's why we already got a commitment here for a car plant. You are telling us that this is the best wine, the Austrian wine. So things are happening here today, I'm telling you. I'm excited. But let me just uh, get right to it. And that is, the last time I saw you, uh, or I should say the first time I saw you, was at the Rose Garden at the White House in 2009. And we were celebrating various different environmental victories, including uh, a, the tailpipe emission standards that we did in California. And then Obama decided uh, to do it nationwide. And that's what the celebration was about there at the White House. And you were very instrumental in that. And so I just wanted to say thank you uh, for that. And I just wanted to find out from you, you've had this great job at the EPA to be uh, the administrator. I call it the secretary of the, uh, of the EPA. You guys call it the administrator, but whatever. And uh, you've seen now everything that has happened the last 12 years. Can you reflect a little bit about what's going on in the environmental movement, you know, with Obama being such a huge enthusiast and pushing the environmental issues, and then Trump coming in after that, and now Biden is back? Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, when I, when I left in 2013, um, I joined Apple. And one of the reasons I did it was I became convinced that it was going to be the private sector partnership that would keep the momentum going. I mean, your standards in California are now the nationwide standards. In many international com countries have followed, but it took businesses, we saw Jim just recently, uh, my CEO, Tim Cook, to say, you know what, we know that we have a r responsibility as well. That yes, our products are important, but we also have to do it in a way that doesn't sacrifice our children's future, that doesn't sacrifice prosperity as well. So yeah, I do, you know, of course there's been ups and downs and government leadership can be uh, strong and then it can wane. But my role today as a business leader is to say, with this hat on, it is our responsibility, not a nice thing to do, but a thing we must do, um, is to, to do our business, good business, that's good for the planet as well. Can you talk, because you're talking about now this new position that you have, um, you were very successful at the EPA. And then you left because there was a change of administration. And then you went into the private sector. And there, again, you took on the top job. I mean, being the head of the EPA is the top job in the public sector. But being the, the head um, of, you know, being the uh, CSO uh, of Apple is really, I mean, Apple is the biggest company in the world, right? So this is, again, the top job. So what does it feel like? Did you ever dream that you would have those two jobs? No, no, I feel very blessed, right? I, I feel that we all are on, on this earth to have purpose, to have mission, to do what we believe in. Uh, we heard Michael Reagan, who's the current head of the, the Secretary of Environment, say he came to this because he loved the outdoors, but he also understood the pollution. And I, I want to applaud your idea that we have to tackle this great inequity that is pollution, children growing up without the ability to be healthy. That is it's just unjust. It's not fair. It's not what any of us want. So no, I never dreamed of it. 
I feel that uh, now at Apple, you know, Apple is carbon neutral today, and we've made a commitment to bring all of our suppliers, our entire supply chain, to carbon neutral by 2030. You mentioned it earlier, thank you. And even suppliers, we already have suppliers here in Austria doing wonderful work for us. AT&S is a part of that commitment. And Infineon just today is announcing that they are going carbon neutral by 2030, that they're gonna use clean energy for all their Apple production. So I sort of feel like I had a job to lead at EPA, and now as a business leader, we can help our colleagues in other sectors do come along on this journey to the future. What is the responsibility of a chief sustainability officer? Because this is a new job, I think, that some of the biggest corporations in the world now have, uh, and that they hire people for that, that they're hiring experts uh, for that. This is a new phenomenon. Can you talk a little bit about what your responsibility is, and also what power that you have within a company to take the company in the right direction? Yeah, you know, um, I'm like you, I think words count, and so you never hear sustainability in my title, because no one knows what it is, right? But I say environment, I say social initiatives, because that's what we really work on. I report to our CEO, Tim Cook. Uh, I advise him on how to achieve our environmental goals, but also our goals around accessibility, so that our products can be used for people who have disabilities. That's incredibly important. Our commitment to education, um, you know, our products first and foremost are wonderful tools for education for all ages. But on the environmental front, we have a roadmap for our environmental product that is as serious in the company as our roadmap for the next iPhone, right? Or our next big innovation, which I can't talk about up here. And, and I report to Tim on that roadmap and those deliverables with the same urgency that um, any, any executive in the company would. And that's the kind of attention it requires. It's why CEOs like Tim or Jim are so important to have CEO level oversight because what the CEO wants is what the company does, right? So basically you're saying that the CEOs are listening uh, to the CSOs. The good CEOs are listening. The good CSOs. <laughs> but what, what do you think the percentage is? I, I just want to have the people get an idea because this is like a really huge development and I think that uh, I've seen now big corporations taking it very seriously to go in the right direction and to personally and to be responsible for reducing greenhouse gases and all that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's fair to say that in the last few years, um, companies that never before took this seriously or were part of the discussion have suddenly realized that not only because uh, it's the right thing to do, it's good business, clean energy is as cheap and sometimes cheaper than the conventional polluting energy that we all grew up with. It's also what employees want. Talk to a, a millennial today and they'll tell you they want to work for a company that's doing right by the planet. They're gonna inherit this planet from all of us. And it's what our customers want. At the end of the day, our customers at Apple expect and really should expect us to do more than make the best products in the world. We should make the best products for the world that they live in. What are you most proud of so far uh, of what you have accomplished since you're with Apple and in which direction you're going? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we transitioned to 100% renewable energy for all of Apple's operations back in, I think, 2016. I joined in 2013. So obviously we were working on it before I got there, but uh, right place and right time. 2016, we're 100% renewable. Um, by 2020, 2019, we were, um, on our way to carbon neutral for our whole company. And then last year we made our pledge for Apple 2030 to take all of our supply chain to carbon neutral. I'm proud of each one of those because as Tim always says, it's, it's more than what we do inside our company. We should be a ripple in the pond out with our suppliers. They're really our partners, right? Infineon is our partner in making our products. We should be helping and be a part of their journey to be um, running on 100% renewable energy as well. Do you have a blueprint of how to get to carbon neutrality in 2030? We do. 
You we do. call it our carbon roadmap. Yeah, no, because the reason I'm asking that is because this is the most important thing. We in California, the reason why we have been successful, and I think the most successful state in the union, is because we have the Air Resources Board that creates a blueprint or a scoping plan, what they call, that where we can figure out exactly what we need to do month by month and year by year to get there, to meet this goal. So any country that makes a, a promise and does not show or is not able to show at least within a year a blueprint or a scoping plan on how to get there, I think they're fooling you. They're not really honest and they're not really straightforward. So this is why I'm saying that, that's why I wanted to ask you and test you, does Apple really have a blueprint? And you said, yes, it do. Then, then you get there. Because I, if I wouldn't have had a blueprint on how to get to be Mr. Universe, I wouldn't have gone there. You cannot just go to the gym and start working out in different party parts, but without having a goal. I mapped out how many sets of exercises I have to do, how many reps they need to do, what exercises, what machines I have to use. I had to really write down everything specifically. That's how you get there. And this is, I think, the important thing also for every country that promises they're going to be carbon neutral by the year 2040 or whatever. Let me see that blueprint. Let me see that scoping plan. How are you going to get there? And you're not always going to make that blueprint, may I remind you. That then you're scrambling, which we've done this in California, where we said, oh my God, you know, we are, we are falling behind with renewables. And uh, so then we go and we do some extra work and get everyone together and says, we got to make up for that. We lost a little time here. But you know where you are. You're not going to go to 2040 and say, you know, guys, I think we overpromised and underdelivered because then it's too late. We got to go and get real now. That's the most important thing. So I think that's, that's what it is, right? Yeah, leadership is about plotting the path forward. I agree, measuring. And now I want to speak to the engineers and the scientists in the audience like me. We're going to need some innovation along the way. I mean, that's why I love being at Apple. It's, an, it's a company based on the idea that what we have today is not what we're going to have next year. And so, of course, there can be times when you're not sure all the steps that will get there, but you can say our innovations must also be on the path to carbon reduction, right. not in the other direction. Right. There's one other thing before we leave that I want you to kind of clarify or uh, maybe explain. There's a new word that came up in the environmental movement. This is environmental justice. It's kind of a thing that is being used more and more now in California and also in the whole United States. And maybe you can explain a little bit about, A, why is there such a thing, an, an alarm about environmental justice or injustice right now? And how do we straighten that out and how do we get that to get rid of this problem? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I grew up in New Orleans, which was devastated by a major hurricane. The, the house I grew up in is no longer there. We have the honorable and esteemed president of Seychelles here with us. There are parts of this world that are in grave danger of not being able to exist if we don't change what we do in terms of the amount of pollution that we all, all of us, uh, allow to be emitted in our names for the products we buy or the places we live or um, the transportation we use. And so I, I love and, and I've always felt that at the heart of environmental protection is people. You mentioned it in your opening, people demanding something different. We are also saying that the people most at risk, the people who oftentimes are on the receiving end of pollution, have to be at the table with a voice and have to be part of the solution. Let's grow the businesses in clean energy that include people who have historically not had a chance to be those entrepreneurs. You know, and so at Apple, we have this idea of an accelerator for businesses in communities around the world that have mostly been impacted by climate change. How about making some money from the solution to climate change? So it's, it's actually, I want to thank you for your leadership. You did that when you were governor. You continue to bring it up. And it's part of our moral obligation, I think, in this world is to make sure we're all part of the, of the green future we're building. But thank you very much for enlightening us here. Thank you very much for being in Vienna. And, uh, you know, do you want me to teach you some German? Uh, a little. Maybe my son ich can help, say right? Ich 
Äh, ich, ich, ich liebe, liebe Österreich. Österreich. Thank you very much. Thank you.